Hey, my name is Michael Murray, and you may have seen some videos of me advertising my book, Nobody Left Out, Jesus Means the Message, and oh, okay, okay, um, come back for a minute, oh, there we go, and I always say my book is for mercy, broken people, and the subtitle is a 40 day devotional for mercy broken people like me. But what do I mean when I say broken people? Today I'm gonna tell you what I mean by that. Now when I say I'm broken, some people push back on that idea and I get why. And every now and then, I get a comment on my videos that says something like, You are not broken, you are beautiful, or God made you perfect just the way you are. And I really appreciate these sentiments, and there is some truth to them. But this is where it's important to embrace some tension and that's not an easy thing to do. But two seemingly opposite things can be true at the same time. I can be beautifully created in God's image and be broken in my humanness. Now when I call myself broken, some people may think it's because of my physical disability and I'm being too hard on myself. But when I say I'm broken, I'm not actually talking about my physical body or my disability. I'm talking about my whole being, every aspect of my life. One of my favorite definitions of the word sin is that it's simply anything you do that breaks the shalom, the peace of God. And I know I do things every day that breaks the peace I have with God, with others, and even myself. And uh, if you don't believe me, I could give you a list of people who will, who will verify this phenomenon. And uh, you know what? I'm guessing that you have a list you could give me as well. See, the gospel says we were beautifully created by God and yet are broken. The world isn't as it should be and we add to the mess. But the good news is the story that doesn't end there. Jesus is redeeming all things, including me and you. The gospel of outdoors isn't good news, it's despair. It's like one of those indie films with a sad, depressing ending. You know, Life is meaningless. We're all gonna die, and there's nothing we can do about it. Now, who wants ice cream? But the gospel without brokenness isn't good news either. It's phony. It's a caricature. It paints a happy face on everything and pressures us to turn that frown upside down. 
it may work for a while, but ironically, pretending to be unbroken will break us. But when I embrace my brokenness, all my flaws, all my shortcomings, all my mess, and realize that God loves me and is with me in all that, then that is a wonderfully freeing thing. Think of any Bible character. I mean, even if you're not a Bible person, think of any other famous stories. Moses, Jonah, David, Peter. All of these stories are about God using mercy, broken people. There are no great biblical heroes except for Jesus. There are only messed up people that God invites into his story. And that gives me hope. I call myself broken because I am broken. I don't want to carry the weight of pretending I'm not. But I'm also fully loved. I'm invited into God's story. And I get to bring my mess with me. And guess what? You do too. And that's why I think my book is for mercy, broken people. The devotional looks at eight encounters Jesus has with messy, broken people and how he entered their mess, he entered their story, and he became the hero of it. And because he did that for them, I have hope that he could do that for me and for you.